Hey guys, how's it going? It's great to see you all, to be in the house of the Lord. I want to uh, share with you uh, from uh, Psalm 77 very briefly, and we're going to get into a time of worship. Uh, Psalm 77, the psalmist says, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. And then it says, Selah, which basically means you just stop and think about that for a minute. And the psalmist then goes on to say this. He said, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among your peoples. Uh, you have, with your arm, redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. And then he says this again. He says, Selah. You just stop and think about that for a little bit. And so here we are in the sanctuary. We're worshiping the Lord tonight together. And I welcome you. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. And the world is filled with troubles, but you are our God. You are a rock. You are our strong tower. And we come to you tonight to seek your face, to worship you, to glorify you. And Lord, we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. Your word says as much. And so, Lord, be honored and be glorified and welcome here as we open our hearts to you. We pray together in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Let's uh, stand up and worship the Lord together. We're going to worship the Lord this evening and joined by people from home, I'm sure. You guys got all that room to worship? Thank you, CDC. <laughs> Let's worship together. I was buried beneath my sin. I 
declare his name. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, man.
not hold him. Death could not hold me. tore before you. You silence the bolts of sin and grave. The heavens are all so great. We thank you for, Lord, just inhabiting the praises of you, your people, Lord. Uh, we pray for this evening that we would be able to just continue to worship of you. Lord, dive into your word and learn more about you. And we lift this up in your name. And all God's people said, amen. Why don't you wave to the person next to you? And you guys can be seated as well. Man, waves go a lot quicker than handshakes, huh? <laughs> hey, we're going to introduce a new song uh, this week. It's called, uh, it's called Waymaker. And the chorus says, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. What a great song for, uh, for this, this time in our, our uh, country and in our world. <laughs> you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you cause you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God, that is who you are. Yes, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 
stop you never stop working you never stop feel the time even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working darkness my god that is who you are i'll sing it out again you are may make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are that is who you are father we're so grateful that we can come to you our ever-present help in time of trouble. Lord, you are faithful, you are true, your word is truth, your word is life. It is that light in the darkness that shines and, and gives to us, Lord, the way to walk in it. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would be with us here. We ask, Lord, for wisdom and discernment as we come to your word. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us, that you would uh, be uh, just moving and working through the proclamation of your word. Your word is truth. You promised to send us the Holy Spirit. You say the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. And Lord, by that same power of the Holy Spirit, you help us to 
to walk in the truth, to take the truth of your word, to process it, to comprehend it, and then, Lord, to live it out that it might make its way to our hearts, to our hands, to our feet, to our lips, that we might speak forth truth and live out truth. And so, Lord, help us not just to be hearers only, but to be doers of your word by the power of your spirit. And we ask it together in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. Well, guys, it's a blessing uh, to be with you uh, tonight. I'm Pastor Ted. I'm one of the pastors here. And I might need to reintroduce myself to all of you because I've been gone uh, so long. Uh, I, I don't like to be out of the pulpit for a long time, but I just got back from the Philippines, and uh, we had an amazing time there. If you've been coming, you know, and have heard uh, the updates of everything that happened there. We had a pastor's conference, actually a couple of pastor's conferences that we did, um, and ministered to literally hundreds of pastors, their wives, their, their ministry leaders um, on the island of uh, Palawan, and um, just an amazing time. Uh, lots of fruit coming out of that. We're going to have the occasion to uh, to go back there uh, next year, and that is uh, our plan, God willing. And uh, you'll hear more about that um, as uh, as time comes. But man, what an incredible time! So fruitful. Pastor Rod got the opportunity at the end of our trip to go uh, up into the jungle uh, where there were uh, several. Um, uh, believers that had had gone there as a pastor faithfully had moved up into the jungle, has raised up a number of Christians uh, there, and he's ministering to them. They actually built a special hut for them when they came to uh, to visit them, and uh, made uh, fresh uh, chicken dinner for them. They said they were running around their feet in the in the afternoon, and they were in the pot that evening. Um, and uh, they saw several people come to know the Lord there in that jungle setting as they proclaimed the gospel. Anyway, a great time, and, uh, and so God's doing uh, a neat work, and I look forward to sharing with you everything that, that's going on. We've got another pastor's conference coming up. Uh, it's scheduled for, uh, for August, um, for July and August. We'll keep that in prayer, but that one's going to be in Europe, and uh, we'll see uh, what God does um, with that. Uh, interesting times we live in. No? I'm just crazy interesting times. You may have noticed we didn't have announcements uh, today, and uh, I'm going to do announcements uh, at the end because there's a lot of updates to give to you guys. Uh, but right now, if you uh, if you'll open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians, um, we're going to be in chapter 1, and uh, the ushers are going to be uh, passing out um, some Bibles, and so if you uh, if you need a Bible, you don't need to be shy about raising your hands. We uh, will get one to you. Our, uh, our well-gloved uh, ushers will get you a Bible if you need one. Uh, as well, by the way, at the end of the service uh, tonight, we're going to be partaking of communion, and we have communion that was at the door um, for you to pick up. Some of you didn't get it, and so the ushers um, will be passing that out at the end of the, the service. So when we come into our communion time, rather than normally have tables set up and just make your way, but uh, tonight we'll pass them out to you. So when it comes to communion time, if you just want to uh, signal one of the ushers, they'll get, they'll get you your, your handy-dandy, prepackaged, individually sealed communion elements. All right, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. This is, uh, this is a timely message. You know, I had planned on moving straight from 1 Thessalonians into 2 Thessalonians upon my return from the Philippines. And, uh, and boy, it's interesting how the Holy Spirit works. Because, you know, Pastor Jim, when he taught, um, he taught on a contrite heart from Psalm 51. And then Sam Morgan taught a couple of weeks uh, in a row after Pastor Jim, he taught about a clean heart from Proverbs chapter 4, and last week he taught about having a contented heart from Philippians chapter 4. And just by the way, thank you, Jesus, for having such great gifted men to teach the Word that are just a part of our fellowship, amen? I mean, just so encouraging for me to see these guys preach, and uh, you know, Jim has been such a dear friend, and, and uh um, you know, just a, a competent pastor. And then Sam was in my homiletics class at the Bible College and, you know, the science and art of biblical preaching. And, and uh, man, God has just gifted that young man. He comes from, you know, his grandfather was a pastor, his dad's a pastor, and God's doing great work in his, his heart. So we're so grateful for strong, competent Bible teachers um, that are here in the church. Uh, it's not a one-man show by any stretch of the imagination. So a contrite heart, a clean heart, a contented heart, and this, morning, or this evening, as we uh, begin this new study in 2 Thessalonians, we're going to be looking with a, beginning with a focus on a thankful heart. 
a thankful heart. And the big idea of our message tonight as we tackle the first four verses of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 uh, is thankfulness in the midst of hardship. How timely is that, right? Thankfulness in the midst of hardship. Paul here is expressing his thankfulness because despite the hardships that the Thessalonians are facing, they have a growing faith in God and they're maintaining a growing love for one another. That's where we're going to land uh, today at the, at the end of the message. It's going to culminate in focusing on that growing faith in God and that growing love for one another. Paul says this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, Silvanus, Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, that's always the, the order, isn't it? God lavishes us. He pours out His grace upon us. He just backs up the truck and, and just, it just lavishes upon you and me His grace, His unmerited favor uh, in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. We are all sinners by nature and by choice. Uh, we deserve hell and judgment and eternal damnation, but God, because He loves us and does not want to see us uh, perish, but that everyone might have eternal life, He sent His Son, His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that whoever would believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died on the cross for our sins in our place. And so we have been recipients of the grace and the mercy of Jesus. And of course, the result is always this peace, grace and peace from our God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, verse 3, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and secondly, the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you uh, endure. So this, this book, this letter, 2 Thessalonians, it follows the book of 1 Thessalonians chronologically by about a year. What had happened was Paul had written 1 Thessalonians about 53 A.D., um, and he wrote it to this church that he had planted on his second missionary journey, if you'll recall that from when we went through 1 Thessalonians, uh, started this church. He was only with them about three weeks. But this church sprang up, and it was growing, and, and, and really they were thriving in the midst of persecution. And so he sent the first letter to encourage them to live with expectation and to live with edification. He basically was saying, look, live with expectation of the imminent rapture of the church, the return of Jesus Christ, and, and live expectantly. And that should inform then how you live and how you live should be that you live with edification, seeking to build one another up uh, in the Lord. And so here now, a year later, Paul writes again, and he's writing to counter false teaching that had seeped its way into this church regarding the coming day of the Lord. That's important because um, what had happened was that, <coughs> excuse me, at the time of this writing, the Thessalonians were going through a lot of persecution. Uh, some, no doubt, was due to the Roman occupation that they were living under, but much of it was due to religious persecution. Uh, probably by, by uh, Judaizing uh, teachers who had troubled the other churches uh, and, and are now, you know, they followed after hounding Paul, troubling Paul where he is now, but they're still back in, in Thessalonica and they're, they're troubling these believers as well. And this persecution led some of the false teachers kind of to rise up within the church of the Thessalonians. And these false teachers were basically asserting that, hey, listen, guys, we're going through all this persecution, and this is the great tribulation. You guys missed it. Like, you know, Jesus came, got everybody, you weren't part of it, now you're going through the tribulation. This was kind of the false teaching that was going on. And they even produced letters that were allegedly from the Apostle Paul affirming, yeah, this is the great tribulation, you guys are going through it. And so Paul writes 2 Thessalonians to, to correct this, to counteract this. And he's basically saying, look, <coughs> that, that's not me. That's not from me. That's not uh, 
these letters that are that are going about are, are forgeries. This is this is not the truth. And what what Paul does, and in the coming weeks we're going to look at this. Paul's going to take a deep dive into end times prophecy. And what we're going to see as we study this book in the coming weeks, Paul's going to deal with the subject of end times prophecy in depth. We're going to look at uh, the rapture of the church. We're going to look at the Antichrist. We're going to look at the coming tribulation. Uh, and we're going to look at the signs of the, of the end. And uh, in light of recent world events, uh, the signs that the Bible speak of should get our attention. Uh, Jesus said this. He said in the last days, Luke chapter 21, beginning in verse 10, put it on the screen for you, nations will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues in many lands and there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. And then he continues and says, people will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth for the power in the heavens will be shaken. So in the coming weeks, we're going to have a very interesting and very timely study as we look at end, end times eschatology, uh, end times things. But today what I want to do in our remaining time together, I want to call your attention to verses 3 and verse 4 because those are very instructive for us in the times that we are living in here in, uh, in March of 2020. And so uh, Paul says again there in verse 3, we are bound to thank God. We, we can't do anything but thank God is the idea. We have to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting. Why? Because your faith grows exceedingly, number one, and number two, the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God. We're, we're bragging about you guys to everybody we come in contact with. For why? Your patience and your faith in the midst of all your persecutions and the tribulations that you're enduring. You're going through an incredible vice press of, of trial and tribulation. And man, your faith is growing and your love is growing, and it's a beautiful thing. As I, I told you guys in, in the introduction to the to the book today, boy, they're going through a rough time. Um, they're facing daily persecutions on all sides. Uh, many of these believers were beaten. Uh, some were put to death. Um, as well, their property was being seized. Uh, workers were prevented from practicing their trades uh, during this time. Uh, and on top of that, it was very common for them to be shunned by their families and shunned by their uh, community. And the result was that they were enduring some massive challenges to their daily living, challenges in getting food, in getting medicine, in having shelter, right? And, and frankly, this puts you in a very overwhelming and vulnerable place when all of this stuff is happening to you, when your life feels out of control. And it hits home for us if you've been to the grocery store lately, if you've watched the news lately, these kind of things when we feel like man, all of this stuff is happening and how am I going to take care of my family's needs and food and medicine and all of these things? Man, it hits home right now in a very powerful way. We have a family member who is in the travel industry and right now she's losing her business and going bankrupt. You know, it's a very real thing and she's not alone. We have a, a friend who is an educator and travels and speaks at conferences and uh, this gal just posting Hey, in the last week, two-thirds of my business has completely dried up. All of my speaking engagements have been canceled, and, and you know, I don't know, there's, there's nothing on the horizon, you know? Um, I read in the Orange County Register just today, they said this, the world after the coronavirus outbreak has fundamentally changed. Airline stocks have crashed and burned. Cruise line stocks have sunk without a trace, see what they did there, uh, has sunk without a trace. And the dip isn't just limited to travel-related industries. Other sectors have also been hit hard, including energy, banking, and other financial services. I, I, heard, I got a quote today from the, uh, the uh, 
International Monetary Fund, the IMF managing director, was quoted today as saying the world's uh, that the coronavirus outbreak is the world's most pressing uncertainty right now. So what do we do when our lives fall apart? What do we do when we're faced with all this incredible uncertainty? We pray. We pray. Paul, here, he's talking. He's saying, he's saying, you know, we're bound to thank God for you. He's talking about prayer and how they're responding to all of this persecution. If you've ever read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, he, he has a quote in there. It says, the loneliest moment in a person's life is when they are watching their whole world fall apart and all they can do is stare blankly. Listen, Christians, we can do a lot more than stare blankly at what is happening in the world. And even, you know, as we take a scary walk with what is this going to mean for me? What is this going to mean for my family? What's the future going to hold? Listen, we don't have to live in that lonely state. We can pray. Paul says we are bound to thank God for you. We, we can't do anything else but thank God for you guys. I like what Charles Spurgeon said. He said, it is your duty to praise God. You are bound by the bonds of his love as long as you live to bless his name. It is meet and comely that you should do so. It is not only a pleasurable exercise, but it is the absolute duty of the Christian life to praise God. Now, let me stop right there and, and just remind you guys, in case you haven't heard, that tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. Right, proclaimed by President Trump that there should be a national day of prayer in response to what we are going through as a nation. And I want you to know that prayer is the most powerful weapon that is available to us during this time. A lot of times we go through things as Christians and we think, well, I can't do anything, so I'll pray for you. Listen, that should be at the top of our list, regardless of I've got 25 things, steps of action that I can take. Man, prayer is the number one thing. The Bible says this, Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Paul told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians, um, he, he said this, he said, Pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. And of course, Paul told Timothy this, Therefore I exult first of all, the supplications, prayers, intercessions, and the giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. I desire, he goes on to say, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. And here's what I want to say on a practical level. I would, I would ask you, I want to invite you, that during the National Day of Prayer tomorrow, Sunday, that you would commit to praying and set your alarm, just choose a, at least a 15-minute time block to where you could pray sometime between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. if we all just chose a time there and if we could labor in prayer. And I've got some suggestions for you. You can pray however the Holy Spirit leads you. But uh, I would ask you to pray for the following. And we, by the way, are sending out a letter from me. Um, if you're on our database, you'll get this letter and it'll all be written out. But I would ask you to pray for the following. Number one, pray for breakthroughs in testing and treatment for every age group that's impacted by what's going on uh, with this virus. Number two, pray that isolation efforts are effective to flatten the curve of transmission. We'll look at that at the end of our message today. Pray for wisdom for our local, state, national, and international leaders. Can you imagine the, the duty of responsibility and the massive decisions that they need to make? I mean, just us in you know, this little church thinking about how we're going to respond locally to all this. I can't imagine what our president and our, our leaders nationally are dealing with, with the, 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 just the manifold depths of the decisions and the impacts that those decisions are going to have. So pray that the Lord would give them wisdom. Fourth, pray that our Christian witness through this event would be characterized by grace and by peace, right? Go to the grocery store. Someone wants to steal the last thing of toilet paper. Why are they all grabbing toilet paper? I don't get it. But man, you know, how can we live out in grace and peace? Pray for the families who will face challenges due to uh, their children being kept home from school. 
man, that, that's, that's a real thing. That, you know, folks are like, I've got a job. My wife works. Like, what are we supposed to do with our kids? You know, kind of thing. Pray for those families that are impacted in that way. Pray for advancements in the development of, of a vaccine. Pray for God to show you specific ways that you can serve him and his people during this event. I've got some suggestions. Can you help somebody with child care needs? Can you help someone obtain appropriate medical care? Can, can you provide some, someone with comfort and emotional care uh, to, to someone? Uh, can you run an errand to somebody to help you provide food or, you know, that you can help them with, you know, get you some food, get you some medicine, get you some other needed items? I, I've been so encouraged. I've, I've heard members of our church talk about how they're checking in with some of their elderly neighbors and, hey, what can I do for you and how can I help? This is how we're supposed to live out our faith as Christians. Listen, church, now is the time for you and I to shine the light of Jesus Christ and to live as beacons of light in a lost and dying world, right? And, and this is so important, <coughs> excuse me, it's so important for us. <coughs> I'm having an asthma attack and it's a horrible time to have one, <coughs> <coughs> right? <coughs> God help me. I was hitting the inhaler before coming up here. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Um, now is the time to put feet on our faith and, and listen, instead of going to a church building, now is the time for you and me that we actually practice out and, and, and going out to be the church, right? We talk all the time about the church isn't a building, right? It's people, and, and we talk all about being the church. Now is the time, guys, that we can exercise being the church of Jesus Christ. James said this, what good is it, dear, brother, dear brothers and sisters, if you say that you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day and stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing, what good does that do? And so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. Uh, it is dead, and it's useless. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the opportunity, guys, that we have as the children of God. Paul told the Ephesians, God makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Listen, guys, here's the deal. Church and the way that we practice church in America is changing right now. We're seeing the, the churches are responding to this. Here we are in the business and in the practice of gathering together socially, right? The Bible says we're not to neglect the gathering together of the saints. The Bible talks about how we're to spur one another on towards love and good deeds, how we're to minister to one another. And, and we just looked at, before I left, how we're to greet one another with a holy kiss, right? How we're supposed to have this kind of affection in, for one another. And now we're faced logistically with the government saying, look, you know, we, we have to flatten the curve of disease transmission, so we, we have to be careful about maintaining social distancing. And we go, man, how do we respond to all of this? Listen, there are ways that we can and should respond to this, but we don't change what the whole fundamental get of being a Christian really means. It means that we're all part of the body of Christ. And what that means is that even though the time is coming when we are, are not going to be able to physically gather together, we have opportunities still to exercise and to be the body of Christ and to live out a, a Christian-led faith and, and being a part of a local body that maybe, thank you Jesus for technology, is connected online and we're connected in community together, but we're going to have to step into this new season. And I think that this is a season of opportunity. I think this is a season where, and listen, God does his best work over 2,000 years. God does his best work through a church that's being persecuted. 
through a church that's going through trial and hardship. That's when we see Christianity thrive and God do amazing things. I think God's ushering in revival for America. I really do. I honestly believe that. I think this is a great opportunity for you and me not to lament or to get frightened or fearful or to, to, to shrink back and say, oh my gosh, we can't do church as usual. What are we going to do? Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do something dramatic. We're going to do something awesome because God's doing a new thing and we're going to respond to it. <coughs> Jude says this. He says, but you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love and you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy still to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. And so Paul here, he gives thanks to God. And he, he felt it was important, he felt it was, it, it was not just important, he felt it was, he was compelled, he couldn't do anything but give thanks to God. Why? For two very positive traits and characteristics in this church. Number one, their faith was growing exceedingly, even in the midst of persecution, their faith was growing. And secondly, their love for all the brethren was abounding. It was abounding. I'm being persecuted. It's tough. I, 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 I might lose my job. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. My faith is growing. My love is abounding. What tremendous characteristics to mark, mark a church, isn't it? For a church just to be known and, and just in a remarkable way by having great faith and, and, and exercising God's love just so incredibly. And I want to close just focusing on those two things. Number one, the growing of faith, and number two, the growing of love. I'm bringing it home now for application for us. We're in a strange time in America. We've never lived through this before. We, 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 not, not, in, not in our memory. We don't know what it is to, to have our way of life change as drastically as it has changed, and it's going to change even more drastically. They're talking about, you know, cutting off all, you know, travel to, to Europe, but they're saying domestically, that's like next, you know. And, um, you know, but, but here's the thing. God's still on the throne, right? He's still on the throne. God is still large and in charge. He's not going to allow anything to happen that hasn't passed his desk, right? That he hasn't approved God. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. We can trust in the Lord. We can trust in his promises. And when we're faced with those things that we don't understand, we can cry out to the one who does understand, who, who promises that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. God is still on the throne, and so we can trust in the Lord, and we can commit to him, Lord, I'm going through all this. Increase my faith. Help me to cast all my cares upon you, knowing that you care for me. We can do all of those things. But secondly, I want you to see they're expanding in love, and there's ways that you and I can expand in love. And this is, brings me to, to the announcement portion of, the, of, of our time together just kind of, okay, this is what God's Word says. They're abounding in faith. They're abounding in love. How can we abound in love as a congregation in light of everything that's happening? So let, let me start this way. Let me explain to you what decisions that we've made as a church and why we have made them. Um, the first decision that we made was for this weekend because the information was coming in, and so we're saying, all right, we, we received a letter from the county the county medical officer, and uh, basically it said, it mandated that all meetings over 250 uh, were now, you know, forbidden um, by the county medical officer. Now, there's been some debate about that and whether churches are exempt to that or not. Um, the information we had when we made the decision was that churches were not exempt from that. Now, some people are saying that churches are exempt from that. Um, that's problematic for when you get to the reason behind why the, the letter was sent. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But with that information, we said, okay, we're going to limit our seating, and we're going to go immediately to live stream. It's, it, it's no secret. I, I haven't been a fan of live streaming um, because I want to get the church together, uh, you know, belly button to belly button kind of thing. 
but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. So, okay, we're going to limit our seating. We're going to go to live stream. But um, this is going to be the last weekend, actually, that we meet together physically. We, we, starting next weekend, in all of our services, we're going to go to live stream only. Um, while, while this uh, virus is still uh, playing itself out here, all of our weekly programming um, is, uh, all of our in-person gathering during the week is going to be modified. And that's going to include uh, our men's tactical, our women's ministry, our classes, our groups. We're going to go entirely to, to an online format. So we're going to discontinue all, all you know, physical meetings that, that we have. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to utilize Facebook Live. We're going to utilize our Reliance YouTube channel. By the way, right now, as, as, I'm, as I'm sharing with you, as we're gathered together in church here, we have almost 100 people joining us online. Hi, guys. It's good to have you. Uh, yeah, right? Praise the Lord. Next week, we're all going to be online. Um, and I like what Greg Laurie said, by the way, because he put out an announcement to his church, and he said, hey, all this is going down, and people are asking, are we going to have church this weekend? And the answer is, of course, we're going to have church this weekend. We're just going to do it online. See, and that's our attitude, and that's our idea. We're going to respond to this and say, look, we're not going to neglect the gathering together of the saints, but what we're going to do is we're going to gather together online. And I'll tell you, the online format, as we, as we do our live streaming, there's an opportunity there, and it seems counterintuitive. When I teach you guys on, on a, in a gathering like this, um, you know, I, obviously, I want you guys to pay attention to the teaching. I don't want you to be a distraction to other people. So when you talk during the, 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 the teaching, it's, it's, it doesn't, doesn't really work uh, for the people that are around you. They're being distracted. But if you've ever done, you know, a live streaming, watch somebody, you know, in their service, which I have, there's a feature in there where, peop where people can talk, um, right in the middle of the message. And, uh, and it seems counterintuitive, but it actually is very encouraging because what people are typing, they're saying, amen, they're saying, wow, that hurt, you know, man, you know, that hit me hard or whatever it is. And, and what's happening is the dynamic of the, the brethren are connected together, and, and we, we're going through this in community. And so um, we're going we're gonna to emphasize uh, that. Um, ministry leaders are going to be sending out this week to all their different ministries, so our women's ministry leaders, our men's ministry leaders, and so on. They're going to be sending out specific information. So if you're a part of the women's study, if you're part of the men's study, if you're part of you know, one of the groups that are, that are meeting, one of the classes, one of the support groups or whatever, your leader's going to be contacting you and going to give you information about how you can stay connected online um, through these things. That's the what we're doing. Let me tell you why we're doing it. Um, I told you about the Riverside County Medical Director that they mandated this. I want to put a, a graph up on the screen for you if you take a look at this. Um, this is, uh, oh, no, that's Reliance Stories. Let's go to the graph. There we go. This graph right here is why is it so important to act early on the coronavirus? Well, you see the, the large spike there um, is the, the people that are in need of medical care. And the, the, the line that, that, that is just now going under, that's the capacity, our ability, uh, our available hospital and medical workers to care for those people. So that line, that spike, dramatically uh, outpaces our medical system's ability to care for people if the coronavirus spreads, and it certainly is spreading. I'm going to give you some statistics from... Uh, from the uh, CDC, the Center for Disease Control, that pertain to America. This is, this is why it's so important. We have to, what they call, flatten out the curve. That's what that is right there, flattening out the curve. The only way to flatten out the curve is to minimize our exposure to one another. And I will just freely admit this. Even though I was in the medical uh, business for, for a long time, I was a paramedic for 10 years, um, when all of this first started breaking, I just, I was skeptical of the whole thing. Um, but the more information that I've received and the more I've dug into this, we have to take steps to limit our social exposure because we've got a problem right now in America. We do. And the worst thing that can happen is that we take all these dramatic steps, we get a month or two down the road, and everybody says, wow, that was an overreaction. 
in which case I'll go, you're welcome. I'm glad that we took, that we all overreacted and that, that it, it didn't end up being the problem um, that it could be. Because here's what's at stake if we don't do this. I want to share with you, and I don't do this to scare you, I just want you to understand where, where we're at. The worst case scenario modeling coming out of the, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta uh, estimates that as many as 160 to 210 million Americans could contract the coronavirus uh, over the span of the next year, okay? 210 million Americans. As many, according to their modeling, this is worst case scenario, but according to their modeling, as many as 21 million Americans could require hospitalization. Okay, let me put that in perspective for you. That's 20 million more people than we have hospital capacity in America to take care of. Okay, that's 20 million more people, 20 times uh, more than we have the capacity to care for. And here's the worst number. They, their, their modeling, their worst case scenario modeling is that between 200,000 and 1.7 million Americans could die from the coronavirus if it goes unchecked, okay? So this is why we as a church are saying, look, I don't care if the county's mandating this or not. And by the way, it's only a matter of time before they mandate everybody to do this church or not a church. Um, they're mandating social distancing for a reason. We need to make sure that we flatten out this curve because the alternative is going to be devastating to our nation and to our world. And so this is why we're doing it. And, and listen, I go back to this. Guys, this is the time for you and me to be the church. If we react to this and go, oh, man, we all, we all can't go to church anymore, so bummer, and, you know, let me see what I can binge watch on Netflix. And, and, and it, we just don't let, we don't respond to it in, in a, in, by being the church, then there's a profound problem. We can't say that the church is not a building, and then when we can't meet in the building anymore, stop being the church, okay? Talk about hypocrisy. We can't be those people. This is a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for you to help people practically and to live out, put hands and feet on your faith. This is a great opportunity to practice generosity. This is a great opportunity to share hope with other people. Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 3. He says, Your heart should be holy and set apart to the Lord God. Always be ready to tell everyone who asks you why you believe as you do. See, and so this is a great opportunity for us to be witnesses. And it's a great opportunity, guys, for us to be bold. And I want to exhort you as your pastor, now is the time to be bold in your faith. You've got opportunities to share your faith. I told you about uh, something that we have. You guys can put that other uh, screen up there, shot up there. Um, Reliance Stories. It's a feature we've got on our, our webpage. <coughs> and we have right now several, <coughs> excuse me, I'll go out through the back when we're done here. How's that? <laughs> we have several uh, stories on our website of people living out their faith in community. It's very encouraging as people share their testimony. Great, uh, great witness testimonies. Here's what I want to do to help us stay connected relationally, okay? During this, this time of, of uh, practicing extreme social distancing. We're going to stay connected. I want you to be a, uh, a, a, living out your faith as, a, as an on-fire Christian. Uh, even though we don't gather together physically on Sunday, we're going to gather together online on Sunday, and you're going to be the church in your community. You're going to be the church to your neighbors. You're going to be the church to your friend. You're going to live out your faith in missional living. And then what we, what we want is we want to share that with the whole community. We're going to be working on all kinds of ways that we can stay connected relationally. And one of them is you can go to that website, you, to our website, ReliancheChurch.org, uh, slash, uh, uh, what is it? Stories, slash stories. There it is, Reliance Stories. And then you see that button that says Tell Your Story? You can click on that. And when you click on that, it comes up to another page which, which has the information that you fill out. And so you just fill it out, and you can submit your, your videos that you take as you, you know, just take your phone, do a, a brief video testimony, submit it, and then the whole uh, congregation can be sharing 
in what's going on. And I'm hoping for dozens and dozens and dozens of these that come online that we can be experiencing, man, what's happening in our, in our, in our community of believers, and we can build one another up with the shared testimonies. Um, we're also going to be sending out lots of um, resources for you guys. Um, the ministry leaders are going to be sending out regular videos for you for teaching and, and so on. The children's ministry is going to be sending out curriculum um, for you. And, and I would encourage you, you head of households, this is an opportunity for you to be mentoring and leading your children. And so our children's ministry is going to put together a, a curriculum for you. And I would encourage you, <coughs> as we go through a change to our to our routines. I want to encourage you, do not change your church routine. We're going to be um, live streaming our services Saturday night at 5 p.m., our services Sunday morning at 9 a.m., our services Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We're going to be live streaming those. And I would encourage you that mentally you, you purpose in your heart to say, I'm going to church. I might be in my jammies in my living room, but I'm going to church, right? And you and your family, you go to church. You enjoy the worship, you enjoy the teaching, and you take notes, and you seek the Holy Spirit, and then you heads of households, you lead your children, and you teach them and instruct them, and we're going to provide uh, the um, curriculum for you. Uh, we have communion elements, just as we, we uh, have tonight to pass out. We've, we've ordered many of those. And so you're welcome to come by the church office. We're going to be here uh, in the church office, just, to, just business as, as, as usual during the week. You can come to the church office, and we can give you communion elements that you can take home. And, of course, you, you, you don't need those. You can have, take, partake of communion, you know, with, with bread and juice at home. There's, there, there, there's nothing... Uh, you know, sacred about the elements themselves. They're symbolic of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you need communion elements, you come by here, we'll give them to you, and that can be part of your church service as you're, as you're gathering together. As well, you know, if you need counseling, if you need prayer, um, the pastors are here, um, and, uh, and we're not going anywhere. And so if, if you need, you know, to call or, or to come by, um, we're here for you, and we want to be here for you. Let me close with this. God is at work. Guys, God is at work. We need to recognize that. For 2,000 years, the gospel has thrived the most during trial and persecution. We're going through a trial. Listen, I'm looking for a revival. I'm looking for God to do something great in us and through us because now is the time that we can be the church, right? We're not going to come to church. We're going to be the church because that's who we are. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to partake of communion. And so, uh, and by the way, at the at the end of the service uh, today, just as always, our leaders are going to be up here. And if you need prayer um, after we've uh, partaken of communion and worship the Lord, uh, and and are worshiping the Lord, if you during this communion time need prayer, our leaders will be up here to pray with you, pray for you. We'd love to do that. And so I'm going to pray. And if you don't have communion elements, the ushers are here, and so you can you can. Uh, Flag them down, they'll get them to you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your body broken for us. We thank you for your blood shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, we partake of the bread and of the cup as symbols of your love and your grace for us. Symbols of, of you demonstrating your own love for us in this, that while we're yet sinners, Jesus, you died for us. And so, Lord, we thank you so much for your love and for your care for us. As we worship you now, Lord, we worship you by remembering you and partaking of communion together. Be honored and glorified in this place. And, Lord, I do pray. I want to pray for us as a church that you would enable us to respond to this time in a way that brings you glory and honor, in a way that spurs one another on towards love and good deeds. And, Lord, may you uh, cause there to be revival in our land, and that this time of, of trial for our nation, Lord, would be a time when you would, when you would intervene and, and cause there to be a, an awakening of folks that need to know you, cause there to be a revival in people whose, whose faith has grown stale. 
Father, we want to pray for our nation and for those that are currently infected with this coronavirus. We want to pray for those who, according to the modeling from the CDC, are going to be infected. And Father, we, we pray for healing for our nation and for, for those who are afflicted with this. Lord, hearing reports just recently of a, of a man in, in San Diego on a ventilator right now. Hearing another report of a firefighter in, in uh, Northern California who's, who's in grave condition now on a ventilator, Lord. Having contracted this virus, caring for people. And Lord, we pray that you would bring healing. Lord, I pray that you would cause us as a nation to respond to this crisis by taking seriously what the medical professionals are saying and that we would exercise uh, the social distancing as they've, as they've asked us to and that, Lord, we, we by so doing could exercise wise prudence. And you say that in your word, that, that the, the fool sees danger and he just goes blindly on and he suffers the consequences. But that the, the wise person take heeds, uh, takes heed and, 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 uh, and avoids that danger. And so, Lord, I pray that we would take heed, being able to exercise faith, but at the same time being wise and exercising good stewardship. And so, Lord, help us to be able to do that. Father, I want to pray for anyone today who is despairing, who is in a place of trial and, and great struggle and turmoil with the things that are happening. I pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them. Listen, this is a great opportunity here in this time and this, this attitude of prayer as we're coming before the Lord. I want to boldly ask you, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Have you invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Because the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. An eternal death, a separation from God. A fiery torment. But the gift of God, the Bible says, is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the truth of the gospel says that God loves you so much that right now today, if you've never surrendered your life to the Lord, but God is revealing himself to you, the Bible says that you can practice repentance. Repentance means simply that you turn, that you turn to God. That repentance, let me tell you what it looks like. It looks like this, that if God is speaking to your heart now and you don't know where you would spend eternity, that you're afraid of what death might mean. That if you were to die, you don't know if you would go to heaven, if you don't, would go to hell. But you can know. Repentance looks like this. It looks like you just confessing your sins. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And confession means to agree with God. You agree with God that He is the Christ, that, he, that Jesus came as the Son of God, gave His life as a ransom for many, that He died on the cross for your sins in your place. You confess that. Lord, I believe that. Confession includes, Lord, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, that he conquered Satan and sin and death. I believe he ascended into heaven and that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, that there he ever lives to pray for us. And Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner and that I need forgiveness. And so I say, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Come into my life. If you need to pray that prayer tonight, I want to give you this opportunity to do that. And right where you sit, where you, maybe you're sitting at home online right now, right where you sit, you can repent and you can turn to the Lord. And if you do that, I would encourage you to join me in a prayer maybe like this. Father, I believe that Jesus, the Son of God, God incarnate, who died on the cross for me in my place, 
I confess to you I'm a sinner. And I invite you to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Save me, Lord. Cleanse me. Make me a new creation. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. And behold, all things become new. Lord, I want to become new today. Come into my life. I pray it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, that I would encourage you, the next thing you need to do is tell somebody. If you're online, you can just reach out to us. You can tell us. You can, you can, you can communicate with the church. You can send an email to info at reliancechurch.org. Hey, I prayed that prayer. Listen, we will we'll reach out to you. You can write on the message board, I prayed the prayer. We will we'll, we'll DM you. We'll get to you. If you're here in the sanctuary, hey, I prayed that prayer. We're going to have folks up here praying for, for all kinds of needs tonight. Folks are going to come forward for prayer, for big things, for little things. Maybe you can come up and, and, and get prayed for yourself. Say, I prayed to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. And we're going to encourage you in your faith and give you some material to help you in your relationship with the Lord, to help you to grow. Right now, we're just going to continue in our response to the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord and as we do. You can partake of the bread and of the cup as the Lord leads. You can come up for prayer during this time of response. And when we're done, we're going to give one another an elbow, kick toes, a hearty nod, whatever it is. And uh, we will see you guys next week online. Amen. Love you. Take the bread of life, broken for all my sin. Your body crucified to make me whole again. I will recall the cup, pour out and sacrifice. To trade the sinners in for your new covenant. Hallelujah. I live my life in remembrance. Salvation's own with fear and trembling. Your way born as my own, as Christ is born in me. Hallelujah! I live my life in
stand together for this last song. For we trust in our God and through his unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken so i'll sing that with one voice tonight church for we trust in our god and through his unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Though the battle, though the battle rages, we will stand in the fight. 
Though the armies rise up against us on all sides, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For in the hour, for in the hour of our darkest day, we will not tremble. Won't be a parade. Hope will rise in like the light of dawn. Our God is for us, He has overcome. For we trust in our God and through His unfailing. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For we trust in our God, and through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. All those against him will fall For our God is stronger He can do all things No higher name we can call For Jesus is greater He can do all things you believe that? All those against him will fall. For our God is stronger. He can do all things. Yes, he can do No higher name we can call. For Jesus is greater. He can do all things. One more time. Oh, we trust in our God. And through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Lord, that's our prayer this night. Lord, this, this season in, in our church, in our, in our country, Lord, we pray that we wouldn't be shaken, that our, our foundation would be you, Jesus. Uh, we love you, and we lift this up in your name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Hey, we, we'll see you guys uh, next week uh, as uh, online, uh, live streaming. If you need prayer, uh, you can come forward. If you're live streaming and you need prayer, call our church office, 695-0809, and we will see you guys next week.